Shalom and welcome to our 20th annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part 8 of Preparing for Rulership. Now, in order for you to have life eternal, then you're going to have to live it on the earth. Isaiah 45, 18, read. For thus saith the Lord Yahweh, that created the heavens, Yahweh himself, that formed the earth, and made it. He hath established it, he created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. As our people began to wake up from their 433-year-old sleep under slavery in America, we've suffered two kinds of slavery in America. One, a physical slavery for 310 years. In 1865, they pretended to free us, and from that moment until now, we suffer a mental and spiritual slavery. We are a peculiar people in, a, people in America who do not exhibit freedom of mind. We exhibit a dependent mind. All the other people that come to this country come and avail themselves of the glorious opportunity of free enterprise in America. And it would be 10,000 of them to come together in this country, they don't want to live among other people. They form a little community. Mm -hmm. And they form a little group, and then they open up little shops, and they all shop together. But as a people, we do the opposite. So if something is wrong with us. But when we wake up from this sleep, and I'm the only one waking us up, we become enthusiastic. We become elated. We become overjoyed when we wake up out of our mental sleep, our spirits of death. We become happy and we become inspired that the kingdom of Yahweh is soon to be ours. And then we take on a brand new spirit. What kind of spirit? Yeah. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you show love one to another. Fair? John 13, 34, and 35. I'm speaking, but I stopped to let you see I'm coming from the book. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you and as I love you, that you also love one another. I'm your example. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciple. If you have love one to another. So when you're born again in my spirit, and of my spirit, and of my divine mind, then when you meet people, you'll show them that you love them. You may never have seen them before in your life, but if you're my disciple, you'll show them that you love them. And then these people can feel my love in you for them. Oh yeah, I'm positive of that. Now let's look at Psalm 72. I want to finish talking as much as possible about the rule of the righteous king. And I am the righteous king. Let's start at verse 7 again. Read. In his days shall the righteous flourish, and abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. These are my days. And since I am the righteous king, I cause my disciples and followers to flourish and prosper. 
verse 8. Psalm 72, verse 8. This is talking about my works, what I was promised I would do. Read. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. That's a lot of territory that I am to rule on. Sounds like the earth to me. Sounds like all six that sea is home. Because from sea to sea is from Atlantic to Pacific. Uh, that kind of sounds like all of it to me. From sea to sea, all land now, between the seas. And all people on it have to submit to my will. I'm going to force all nations to bow under your feet. How many of you are ready to rule? I mean, in your mind, you like the idea about rulership. You're tired of being walked on. And you that don't want it, I'm going to have great pleasure ruling over you. So it's like, what's so beautiful about Yahweh is, you may not want him, but see, he's still the ruler. And the joy is, you're invited to rule with him, but if you don't want to, you'll just be ruled over by him. And as you live a while, you'll begin to understand that I'm gaining power. Just like you see me all over the country, I'm in the Highlands too. We found out last night, I'm in Africa too. And I'm growing. Those uh, that are in Africa, they tell them that are from Africa here, they tell them that they're people better. They told you that, didn't they? So soon I'll be able to walk into Africa. And they're already black, you know? So that's not the issue. The issue is morality. People that walk good. I come for the good people. My rulership, dominion means rulership. I'm going to rule from sea to sea. And what he's doing for me, he'll do for you. He raised me up as an example for what he wants to do for you. That means this is not a selfish thing that I'm doing. It's, it's not a thing that I just want to be ruled from sea to sea, but you are my family. So you will rule with me from sea to sea. That mean? It means the people that you see ruling today are not going to be ruling tomorrow. It's simple as that. I am going to take their rulership. And you don't need a God for that. I teach us not to carry weapons. See, this is a spiritual war. This is all about winning the good people on the earth. The people who believe in loving one another, and helping one another, and bless, blessing one another. And I know that the majority of the people of the earth are looking for this. They're tired of hell and confusion and war. And the people that want to make war, like you hear war, rumors of wars every day, dominates the news. They're over there now trying to start World War III in the Persian Gulf. Not satisfied. Can you imagine warships from America 10,000 miles from here in other people's land? Can't defend America against Christ. How can America win the war against the nations of the earth and can't win the war against drugs? America can't win a war against pornography, evil and wickedness and crime in the streets, murders and robberies, criminals in high places. How can America police the world? She has to use guns to try to subdue people and it has never worked because she's an evil group of people. If you, if you conquer them with a gun, it's going to take everybody in America to go over there and hold them down. Then what's going to be happening back here? I'm taking over, that's right. The good, 
Y'all yeah, always got them stressed out over there. I'm, I'm raising up people that believe in good. That makes me the Prince of Peace. How many believe I'll win being good? Anybody believe a good man has a chance without guns? Those who don't believe it, keep watching me. How many of you are witness? I'm gaining every day. So I'm the one that's going to have an army that, that that's great and exceeding and great army that's spoken about in the Bible. Verse 9, read. They that dwell in the wilderness Wait shall... now, where is the wilderness? America is referred to as the wilderness. Because 200 years ago, and when we came, 433 years ago, America was a bit far. Indians running around in teepees and buffaloes. They brought us over here and we built, and we are it. We are the one. Praise God. We are the one. And what has happened? Built up the wilderness. So we dwell in here, in the wilderness. Now read it. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. All of my enemies are going to have to lick the dust. Now, if you don't like the dust, you better be my friend. Verse 10, read. The kings of Tarshi and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. That's what I'm going to have for you. How many know who Tarshi is? That's England. That's Europe. All the kings, this is the man, this is the king. All the kings of Europe, all the rulers of Europe are going to have to bring what? Presents. See, all these kings of Europe, you know, those are ours. Over there in Europe, yeah, those are ours. And I'm the one man that can tell them to their face, look, white folks, all of you who ruling over there, you're going to have to bring me presents. And all you black rulers of Sheba and Sheba, all the rest of you black ones over there in Africa and everywhere, you're going to have to bring me gifts too. And you don't have an option. It is written. If you want to live, you're going to have to do this to me. And now you know what I'm going to do when I get gifts from all these kings and rulers. How can I carry it around? So what am I going to do with it? We'll give it to you. Like I'm doing everything now. Please turn to side two. Praise God. Now a lot of you know what kind of gifts I like. And present. What do I like? That's right. I, and what else? That's why I like gold and silver. That's why I wear it as a sign. Diamonds don't make me feel bad either. Something good is about to happen to you. <laughs> Verse 11. Read it. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. All kings? I thought that was just some kings. Most kings. Are going to have to bow before me? Seriously, that must make me king of the king. I must be king of all kings then. The kings don't have to bow down to a spirit. As long as your God is a spirit, how is anybody going to bow down to him? You don't know when he's around. The spirit. As long as you have a spirit God, then he can't hold you accountable. 
And then when you see movies, you be looking up. Oh, uh, Lord, you know you don't see nothing. Looking up in the air, talking about, oh, Lord, and they don't see nobody. If you see somebody, I definitely have to talk to him and ask him, why have you allowed wickedness to rule on us so long? Why have you held your peace so long? See, I come with my reward. I come with the answer. And I'm subduing the earth now and shall subdue it under your feet. Because if you ask me these questions, I have the answers to them. Any question you can form inside your mind, I can answer it. And then I can put questions you never thought about inside your head and then answer those too. I'm excited, aren't you? Y'all will excite me like that. See, I have a man that backs me up. When I talk, he confirms what I say. That's, what I, that's why I follow y'all. I say what he wants me to say and he backs it up. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah, Yahweh. And yet all kings are going to have to bow before me. The king. Praise Yahweh. All kings are going to have to bow. Verse 12. Read. For he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. I'm doing this. All right, next verse, read. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. Am I doing this? All right, next verse, read. Verse, uh, what is that, 14? Verse 14, read. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence. Am I doing it? Yes. You've been deceived, I'm showing you how not to be deceived. Read. And precious shall their blood be in his sight. How many of you know you're precious in my sight? I'll show you and demonstrate it. Praise God. Man. Hallelujah, God. Verse 15. Read. And he shall live. And to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. See, y'all are talking. This is the word. You believe the word, you believe in God. You believe in God, you believe in y'all. You believe in y'all, the word is alive. And it's become flesh. I'm flesh. But I'm the word. In a body. My body's not God. But body with intelligence thinks that. You're looking at the word so you can behold my glory. The glory as of the Father. Am I quoting the book? Yeah, I'm quoting it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to get through so we can move on tonight. That's all. Let's enjoy this program. Verse 16. Verse 16. Read. There shall be an handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. How many understand that? How many need me to explain that to you? That's so, I mean, what in the world does some ears of corn up on the mountains of earth have to do with us. And that corn is symbolic of my disciples, saying that there'll be a handful of you, meaning the remnant. And we're going to be on top of the government. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon. That means we're going to have plenty of babies. And they of the city, you in the cities, right? So what? Prosper like grass of the earth. Ooh, you're going to, look how rich I'm here to make you. You shall prosper. Let's prove that the corn on top of the mountain got to be people. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> Verse 17. Read. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. That's my destiny. So, I'm going to do the same for you. But my father's name is alive. And they hid it, but look what I'm here doing. Revealing it. I'm revealing it. They thought they had hid it forever, but look at it. I got it going all over the planet. Now you're going to kill out the name when I'm putting it in people's heads. So my father's name, my name is the same as his, so my name will endure forever. I'm making sure. So even the nations will say, I'm blessed. So they'll say, what about you? You're blessed. I come with the blessing for you. Next verse, read, which is 18. Blessed be the Lord Yahweh, God, the God of Israel. The God of who? Now, if you did not know you are Israel, then you would be in trouble. You would think all these blessings belong to Jews or somebody else. When all the time, all of these blessings are yours from the God of Israel. So Yahweh is who? The God of Israel. And you are who? What tribe? Chosen to be what? How long? Who can stop you? You've been held down because you didn't know it. So you are begging other people to let you become equal to them when the God of Israel, your God, the God of the heavens and the earth, chose you to be ruler over everybody forever. Why settle for less when you can have the best? Verse 19, the last verse, read. And blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Selah and Selah. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I've enjoyed bringing this message to you. I hope you, your soul has been lifted. This concludes part eight of Preparing for Rulership.